Hi everybody, welcome back to Daisy. And in this tutorial video, I want to show you the concepts and how to make your own custom Dr. Jones uh, trader base. As you know, the Dr. Jones trader base um, in the uh, vanilla mod comes with uh, Chernerus on it, but it's quite easy once you know the concepts behind it to make a trader base on any maps you want. In this case, what we're looking at here is a simple trader base on Deer Isle. So to start off with, I mean, obviously you're going to have to have uh, Dr. Jones Trader installed. And remember, whenever you're installing Dr. Jones Trader, it's a good idea to install Helkiana's Trader Fixes and Features, which makes the Trader more usable. And Daisy Editor is pretty much a must because that's going to be the thing that's going to be giving us the coordinates we need to trans transform a uh, custom object spawn JSON into the language that, they, that um, Dr. Jones Trader understands as well. And I will say as well, if all of this seems a little bit much, if you head on over to my repository, I have done custom trader bases for a few maps now. I've done Banoff, Deer Isle, um, and Livonia. So what I'll do is I'll put links to the files that I've already created so that you can go over there. Maybe they'll just be a starting point for you but where you can have them already. Now, before we start, it's important to understand the concepts of how Dr. Jones Trader works in terms of placing objects and placing the trader. And it works by, if you go to your server, now this is a local server, but the file structure will be the same as your remote one on your, on your server in the cloud. If you go down to your config uh, folder, and it could be settings, or it could be profile, or something like that, it's the one that's got all the settings for your mods in. So you'll find names for lots of mods without the at. And you go down to trader, you'll find these files. So we've got trader admins, that tells the trader uh, with their Steam ID who can be an admin. Trader config, um, so that's like how much things should cost. Trader objects, so that's actually placing the trader you know the um, the people, if you like, and the different things like the tents or the the buildings that you're going to use, um, and trader vehicles and well, trader vehicle parts tells the trader when it builds a vehicle um, what bits should go on it. Actually, I don't know what trader variables is. Let's have a look at trader variables because I'm not quite sure. Uh, we don't edit with Skype, do we? All right, so that just uh, sorts out some time scales and stuff like that. So if we have a look at trader objects, if you look down it, it kind of it looks similar to a custom object JSON. And what you have at the top is so this is um, let's go back to a so this is the vanilla one. So on Chernerus at Green Mountain, it starts off and it gives you the trader markers. So these are the points in space that the trader mod treats as a trader. Now this doesn't mean there's a person there. All it is is a point in space where if you approach that point in space, these coordinates here, uh, X, Y, and Z, you will get the trade prompt for whatever particular trader it is. And this is for trader zero. Um, and then, so that's what sets that. And then the safe zone. So when you go into the safe zone, you can't draw your weapon, so you can't shoot anybody or damage anybody like that. So it's important to, to kind of realize at first that the trader is just a point in space. And then it has all these trader markers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because obviously you've got the different traders, you know, who trade in guns, ammo, clothes, food, that sort of thing. And then we've got the ones at Comerna as well. And if we go past these, then we have the actual objects. So if we go to the first one, we can see this is Survivor F Irena. So this is spawning in an NPC at those coordinates there, 36999 by 5967. If we go to the top, we can see that corresponds with the coordinates of the trader position. So what you're doing, in fact, is you're placing an NPC kind of over the top of where that coordinate is so that when you go up to it in the game and you get the prompt that says trade, it appears that you're talking to the person, the NPC, but you're not. They just they just are like a, a dummy that's just there, and that that's quite an important thing to thing to realise. So once you realise that, you think, all right, okay. So in order to have a trader, all you need is to place the coordinates in the correct place, and then place uh, NPC survivors on top of them. And what's really clever though about the way that Doctor Jones Trader deals with it as well is you can place an object in this case, Survivor F Arena. Irina at those uh, 
uh, coordinates, and then it's an NPC dummy. Now that that's in now that's an important line there. What that means is that if it wasn't an NPC, so you were using a uh, vending machine, for example, as the trader, you would get rid of those two lines there because they're how they're remarks. So that they get they mean don't read this line, and you would have that there instead. And then all this sort of stuff here, the object attachments are attached to that survivor so they don't just spawn in their underpants. So she'll spawn in with a box of cereal in her hands, she's got surgical gloves on, a bandana, a mini dress and dress shoes. And so that's that bit. Now if you scroll down past all the survivors which are in the positions that the trader markers are, you'll then find we then have the objects. So what this is doing, this is placing objects at these particular points at a particular orientation. So these are the, the window dressing, if you like, for the trader. Um, and it's just placing things just like an object spawner would do, but does it in a slightly different way. If we look at like an object spawner, the object spawner looks like this, doesn't it? Where you have land mill temp big, X, Y, Z, and then you've got the your, your pitch and roll as well. But trader does it like this. now. What that means as well is that actually you don't really, if you didn't want to, need to use the trader mod to place all the objects for the trader, you know, all the, the buildings and things like that around them. You could actually have a custom JSON that was in the same place. So you can save some time by doing that way. However, you may want to do it with the trader because it just makes things a little bit more clearer when it comes to um keeping an eye on your custom JSON files and just understanding what goes with what. If you've got your traders with the, with the bits that go with the trader and it's all in one place, it's a little bit easier to understand. So what this means then is if we want to create our own custom trader on any map, all we need to be able to do is work out the positions of where the markers should go and then where we're going to put our survivors. So what you can do, and this is the way I do it, is that I fire up the Daisy editor mod. And that's where we go back to here. So here we are, we're in on Deer Isle. And what I do is when I'm gonna make a trader, I think, okay, first thing I would say is you always wanna make it simple, all right? Because <laughs> there can be a lot of copying and pasting in this. And if you have all these buildings and stuff like that, I would say keep the trade a bit simple. Then if you want to add complicated stuff around it, use a custom JSON. And all we do is we go through in Daisy Editor and we place all the objects that we're gonna we're gonna spawn in in the trader. So for example, here I've got I've got these tents. Uh, I've placed the truck where I want the um, um, where I want the uh, uh, vehicles to spawn when you when you trade them in. Uh, interesting point actually is if you want to place the cones that the trader has, you do have to load the trader mod because the cones are part of the trader. And then behind the tents, I've placed some toilets, you know, some you know, just some window dressing to make it look a little bit more interesting. And then if we swap to, in fact, have they appeared or have they disappeared? Then yeah, if we swap to the little man. Here we go, we're the little man, we can walk around. What I've, th I've then done is I've then placed NPCs in the tents where I want my traders to be. And so there's a couple there, there's a couple there, and then, you know, depending on what, what other mods you're running, uh, you know, I've left a bit of space as well, you know, say if you wanted to have like a, an aircraft trader as well, like for Red Falcons Helis or something like that, or a black market trader who dealt in drugs or, or something like that, they could go it again. And then what you do is in Daisy Editor, if you file, export, and export it as, oops, file, export, export as a object spawner JSON, you'll then end up with something like this, where you'll have all the objects. So if we scroll down, we can then see we've got our first survivor. So there's survivor Mirek. And so what we can do is we can copy and paste Survivor Merrick's position over the top of the trader marker position to start off with, because that's going to tell the trader, look, where this fella is, that's where the trader is. And then if we go down, we can then copy and paste those coordinates again over the top of these bits as well. And all you're doing is you're copying and pasting. Now, unfortunately, the JSON can't include things like what bits to um, have attached to the trader. However, what I tend to find is if you just copy the vanilla ones, so if you start with the vanilla file and then adjust it as you go along, 
it all kind of works works very very well um, and you'll end up with something that that, that um, will uh, do exactly what you want to do now I can't lie it's a lot of copy and pasting and you have to be very careful that you get everything right because if you don't you know the, the trader won't work but in this way it's fairly straightforward if not time consuming to go through and just copy all these extra bits over there's all the tents there's the yellow star there's the see there's the road cones that you need to do if you want to put them around where the um, vehicles will spawn that's only really necessary for if people are selling vehicles back to the trader um, because you need to get the car in the right place so that's what that the road cones are good for we've got the barrels we've got the toilets and all that sort of stuff so I've just I've just copied and pasted them all over from you know, all this here into the trader objects and then just saved it and then you just upload it once you're done just upload it back into your trader config file just remember though that a, an odd thing about the way that Tr dr jones trader works is that you don't have different configs for different maps um because the profiles folder or the you know the, the config folder there's only one trader objects per server um, which is a bit of a pain so that if you do change your map you do need to remember to change your trader objects file and any of the other things trader config as well with things like prices to the one for the new map otherwise things will be in the wrong place okay so hopefully that kind of explains the uh, the way of doing it unfortunately um, I did have a chat once with um, uh, inclement dab about whether he would in implement a uh, export to trader format for um, uh, the Daisy editor, and I think he said it, it was something that he'd think of, but um, you know, it wasn't anything that really was on his to do list. I mean, if he would, that would be absolutely fantastic, but I think probably they're more concentrating on things like expansion trader and things like that. Okay, so hopefully, you found this useful. Hopefully, the concept is now clear about how you've got to do it. Unfortunately, I can't make it any quicker, it's, it is a bit of a long drawn out process but it does work and you will end up with a dr jones trader on whichever map you want so there we go if you've enjoyed the video hit like if you want to see more of the same press subscribe and of course i'll see you again soon